only two things to understand with colour. Tone and intensity. Yes, sounds easy. So it is if you listen well. Well, we're working from the chromatic colour wheel. It's very simple colour wheel that I've devised from the spectrum. If you stretch out the spectrum of colour like a rainbow and you bend it in the middle, you'll find that yellow is in the middle. In other words, it's the highest point of intensity is in the middle of the spectrum and also on my colour wheel. We'll get back to that just now. The term lightness and brightness can be very confusing, but miles apart. You have to understand this before we can go on. Take lightness first. It's only stating that a colour is in a light or dark state, like black and white. Nothing more. It's either you get a light yellow or a dark yellow, a light blue as they come out of the tubes. But it has nothing to do with the intensity of a colour. What we're going to look at now is how to decrease or reduce the intensity of a colour. This is a very first step. It is of utmost importance that you know how to reduce the intensity. We'll get back to uh, the other side where you can increase it, but let's understand this very well. So, what I'm saying is, when you take a colour, take blue for instance, to reduce its intensity or its brightness or its purity, you always have to go through the centre line of the colour wheel. That will reduce the blue, not so bright. So let us do it so you can see it physically, what I mean. Let's take a blue and put it down. Now you can't see colours that's in a dark tonal state. So you always add white to see its qualities or its uh, properties. Now let's add white to that and you will see that it's a very bright blue. You surely can't paint the sky with that blue. It is far too intense. So what do we have to do? What did I tell you just now? We take the opposite colour. And this applies to all the colours every time with no exception to the rule. If you stick to this rule, you'll paint well. Now, let me take orange and show you that I can make a less, well, less intense blue, but a more natural blue. There is no intense colours in nature. Nature provides that if you see a blue sky, there's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. In other words, it's two shoes, all the colours are, I don't want to confuse you, but those two mixes is orange, so we've added orange, just as good as I've added those two. Now, take a bit of orange and add it, and again, let's add white to see it. Now, that is the colour that you paint the sky with. That colour there. Not that. You can't use that colour. It is gaudy, it's chalky, it's too intense. That is the colour of the sky. Now, this applies in principle to a green tree. If you want to make it less green, you add the red. You'll see the red in the rose leaves or in nature all around you. This rule always applies in everything about nature and we as artists want to copy nature. So that is why this is so important. To zoom in, to show you at a close range how bright that colour, how wrong it is to paint the sky in that colour. Look carefully at this colour. Let me float it down. Look, it's, you can feel atmosphere in it. What I call this atmosphere is the moment that all the colours are 
present in the mix. And that is how you must find. Now I'm going to demonstrate the uh, tonal and intensity difference in a landscape. The sky is always the darkest at the top. And it decreases in tone and intensity as you go down. In other words, it becomes lighter and less bright until it gets up to the horizon. It is, starts off with dark on top, it lands up on the horizon almost to a pure white. There's a light and it blends gradually to the top. So that is high intense, higher intense than there. It's darker than there. That's all I want to show you at this stage. Now as the sky went lighter, we've got a paint in the distant uh, mountains. Very light. We call this a key. Because we can only go darker as we go forward. There is a light mountain range and we increase the tone and the intensity as we come forward. We put another mountain in. Just very roughly to get the idea. And that is the basis of a landscape. The sky starts uh, very dark, it goes lighter, the distant mountains are light, it gets darker as it comes forward. And right at the foreground, it is always dark. Now I've uh, discussed blue to reduce it. Now there is five more colours, uh, green, yellow, orange and so on. I want you to do it for a practice, for yourself, to understand it. There is no uh, problem with it. You look at a colour, you look at its opposite colour. If you want to introduce green, use red. If you want to introduce red, you add green to it. And, and so forth. And then you'll understand how to change the intensity of a colour to be more natural like it is in nature.